Hey everyone, Alex here. Welcome to the Bandsaw Life. Today I want to show you a simple yet unique box. It's a little puzzle box in the shape of an apple. Now, this box you can't take apart unless you pull that worm out. And the only way we can pull that worm out is to use a magnet, which I've put into the stem. Pull that worm up, slide that lid, just like that. We've got a simple little apple box, or trick box, depending on what you want to call it. Now, I'm going to go through on how I made these. Um, there are two different ways that uh, I use, which is, number one, a solid piece of wood. Um, this is a piece of cypress which was extremely dry. you got to make sure that stuff's dry or it'll crack. Um, the easiest way to do it, and the way I'm going to show you today, is by gluing few boards together so that you can get a solid piece that you know is dry. Now, this one works the same way. Stem comes off, worm comes out, lid slides, and opens. So, let's get started. I'm going to glue three pieces of cedar together. These are not perfect pieces of material. Um, matter of fact, when you're doing bandsaw boxes, use your scraps up. There's no reason why you can't use a piece of wood like this for a bandsaw box. And you'll notice that the center piece has a little knot in it. That's okay. When I cut this apple out, the middle of it's going to go away. I'm not worried about that knot. And I've kind of determined out of all the pieces here that I like this for the front. So I've traced my apple onto the front. Now, today I'm going to be using a, a new glue. If you haven't tried this, um, really cool stuff. Um, it's a Type Bond Speed Set. Now, it, it dries much faster than any of their other glues. You want to make sure you you're, uh, get everything put together uh, properly because once it starts to set up, just a few minutes, and it's really solid. Um, great stuff, only comes in gallon and oh my god, which is the size that I've got here. Uh, I've already poured some into a little cup. Now I'm also going to use this simple little brush by Type Bond. Pretty handy to have in the shop. You can see there are silicone uh, brushes on the end here. That's so that glue really doesn't stick to it even after it dries. Got a little scraper on the other end. Now. Remember, when you apply glue, you only apply glue to one side of the wood. I know a lot of people would prefer to see that glue on both sides. Um, problem is, especially on a glue that dries this quickly, is it will soak in and dry, and then the only thing you're really holding that wood together with is the glue. And what you really want is glue and fibers holding that wood together. That way, it's a much tighter bond. No pun intended. Flip that over. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom. No need to. Whenever I'm gluing, I always keep a wet rag around. Uh, it helps to kind of keep your fingers clean. Uh, but also helps to kind of wipe all that glue free and keep your surfaces clean as well. So, All right, now I'm going to use a couple of quick grips here. We don't need a whole lot for this. I mean, it's just three little old pieces of wood. We want them solid. I do love my Bessie clamps. We'll let that dry, and we'll get to cutting. All right, now I've got my blank out of the clamps. Um, it only took about 15, 20 minutes for it to dry. Now, what I'm going to be using today is a 1 8 inch, 14 tooth per inch blade made by Carter Products. I've also got the blade stabilizer on here so that I can do much tighter radiuses. So let's go ahead and get the outside of that cut.
Now we've got our blank, and we can see what our apple's basically going to look like. Now, what I would suggest that you do before you go any further is get those edges sanded nice and smooth. It'll just save you a lot uh, when you get ready to kind of finish it up, um, and it's a lot easier to do the cuts where they're standing up if this is a little bit smoother. All right, now I've sanded my box close enough to where I can kind of hand sand it and finish it. The next thing that you want to do is you want to cut the lid off. Now, you can cut the back off first, but that just makes it more narrow, a little bit more less stable. What I'm going to do is I want to stand this up on the widest point. Remember, when you're cutting something like this, it could roll into that blade, so you want to be very careful. Now, I'm going to take my pencil, which anybody that's been to my shop knows that uh, you can find a pencil on any machine in my shop. I take a little rare earth magnet, a little heat shrink tube, stick it to the pencil. That way it's always available for me. All right, now we know that this is the front, and what I'm going to do first is I want my lid eh, probably a quarter of an inch or so, and I'm just going to trace all the way around that. This gives us a kind of a reference line. Now, what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to leave our gap up here, not down here. And if you cut the box out like this to where your curve is down, you really have nothing to grip. So, we want to make sure that we cut our curve this way. That way you've got something to pull out. So, kind of a common mistake. It's a lot easier to do it this way, but much tougher to open the box. Now, again, we want the widest part on the table. It's a little tougher to cut it when it's like this. Plus, the bottom has a little bit of an uneven bump. The top is a little bit more straight up and down. You don't have to follow this line exactly, but kind of trace it on there so that you don't forget which way that has to be. So, you can see I've kind of curved in here, curved in here. So I'm going to cut in and follow my line around. I've got my box sanded up. I've drawn my line out. And again, we want to make sure that we get the broadest point here. So make sure that that widest point of the apple is down. Now I've drawn my line in. I'm going to come in, cut, so that I have that grip. So we'll turn it this way. That way you can see everything that's going on here. Now we've got it nice and straight up and down. Slides in and out both sides. Next, we need to cut that back off. Again, we want to make sure that when we cut this, we have the broadest area of support there. 
Now, I've got my fence set for about a quarter of an inch, just enough to take that back off. And the reason that I've swapped to the straight cutting guides, when we cut this back off nice and straight, shouldn't have to do any sanding whatsoever. Yes, there will be saw marks in there, but they'll match up and everything will basically go back together seamless. So... So now we've cut the back off. Next, we want to cut the inside out. Now, when you cut this out, make sure that you try to center this as close as possible for your end cut. You can see on this one, I got just a little bit further over than I wanted to. So it makes this little uh, pin here a little weaker. So try to get it as centered as possible. If you do get off, you can glue it back on. All right, now I just have that centered right there. Bring that right over so I kind of know where to start into that drawer. So now we know we've got it centered. Now you can just kind of stay as close as you want to the outside of that. Again, I find it a lot easier to just simply kind of set my pencil and go right around that. That way I'm not guessing how close I am to that edge. Gives it just a little cleaner look. And again, we don't have to follow this perfectly. We just want to get it as close as possible. Now you'll notice when I got to the end of the cut, I shut the saw down and I'm not moving it until the blade stops. Reason being is all it takes is to kind of get a little bit of that rough edge coming out and then your seam won't be so seamless. All right, the last thing that we've got to do before we glue this thing together is I've got to cut the lid off. Remember, the top is just to keep it from coming open. To make sure that we're not getting too thick or too thin, the easy way to do this is to put this up against your fence, roll it, and then look from the back side, and you can see where you're going to actually cut that box. Again, we're going to use the widest point, which is the top. We've got it lined up. And now, we've got our lid. Now, there is one more thing we want to take off of this. And that's something for the lid to sit on. So, what I'm going to do is just shave a little bit off both sides. That way we can glue it back into the box. And we'll have our shelf, so to speak, for that lid to stay. This 3 8 inch blade should do just fine. Now this would be your waist. And remember the knot I talked about in the beginning? That's gone. These are going to be our shelf for our lid to sit on. And we did get a little bit of that knot in there, but 
gives it a little character. Not too much of it to where it has a hole. Now, we've got all of our pieces that we cut. First, we cut the lid off. Then, we cut the back off. Next, we cut the inside out, which gave us our lid off of the base. This can be used as scraps or a handle or something else, even uh, get your apple stem out of there. Um, I prefer to go with the darker material, but if you're going to paint it anyhow, doesn't really matter. And then last, I took a couple of these shoulder pieces off so that I could set those just inside there. That way, this lid has somewhere to sit and doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So, now all we have to do is glue this together. First thing I like to do is glue this joint here. And the reason being, gives it a little bit of stability because if you don't get that glued up and you drop it and you crack it, well, you're pretty much starting over or you're going to have a crack in your apple. So, I'm going to get this lined up. Again, we're going to use the speed set. And I'll just open that just enough to get some glue down in there. Now, I put just enough glue in there so that, and I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera or not, but when I squeeze it, I want to see some of that glue come through to the other side. If you don't see it, just use your little scraper there. Kind of pry that glue back down into that. And again, we'll flip that over. You can see that glue starting to come through that crack now. That tells me I've gotten it all the way across. We'll just take, actually, one of our speed clamps. Just enough pressure to where you can see just a little bit of that glue starting to squeeze out there. We'll just set that aside and make sure that it's good and dry. You can see that seam just about disappears. Next, what we want to do is we want to glue the bottom into place. Now, something that a lot of people kind of make the mistake of is they think, well, if I just get some of those burrs off there and clean it up a little bit, um, it'll be a much tighter seam. Leave it alone. Just glue it back up, especially if you've used a resaw or a straight cut. makes it a lot easier to just line everything back up. And what I usually look for are some specific grains or cut lines. Find yourself a nice spot, which we'll show you right here. Uh, I'm going to kind of raise that up to the camera a little bit. You should be able to see those grains real close. That way you can see just how everything lines up. We'll get that kind of where we want it. I know that's the way it's going to go on. So I'm going to lay that down. Take some more of our glue. Just get that nice and coated. Um, the outside we can wipe off. The inside, not really that big of a deal because we're going to flock the inside of the drawer and I'm going to go through that, how that's done. That way you can have a nice inside to your box without all that extra sanding and finishing, trying to get the inside just right. And again, I'm going to look for that grain that I want to match up. Got it lined up the way that I want. Don't forget, remember we closed up that gap so the lid or the back is going to be a little bit larger than the rest of the box. That's okay. Try to get those grains matched up. Give it just a little snug. Remember this is a bandsaw box. It doesn't take a whole lot. All you're trying to do is just close those gaps up. Now if you put just a teeny bit of pressure on it You can also still kind of move it around a little bit if you have to to line those grains up. 
Now, this looks like it closed up on the bottom all the way around. Give that just a little more. The only place I see it still just a little bit apart is at the top. So don't be surprised if you got to add a couple of extra clamps. Smaller clamps are easier to work with. Um, I will tell you, I've run out of those. So that's why I'm using some metal screw type clamps. You can see I've closed that gap up. And I'm going to use one more. to get that glue to squeeze out that side. Now everything does look good. Again, it doesn't have to be super tight. Just make sure that it's closed the gaps and that little bit of glue, easy to sand off. Not that big a deal. And the reason that we use uh, the quick set or tight bond, uh, any type really, um, is it's much easier to sand than the uh, super glues are. Super glues, to me, they tend to uh, leach into the wood. Then when you sand it, you have a darker area and a lighter area. So I prefer the tight bond for just about any project. And if I can get it within basically five minutes, it's hard to beat. This has been in the clamps for a good 15, 20 minutes. We can see that all of our seams are nice and closed, nice clean seam. All we got to do is sand that down flush and it'll look like one piece again. Now, just to make sure that we've got a decent fit, I want to first put these pieces in here. And since we're doing the inside of this, um, we're going to flock it, which means we're going to paint it and then we're going to put the uh, felt in there. I'll use a little bit of this just for the sake of time, and, and I would probably do this as well if I were um, doing it uh, by myself without a film crew. So I'll just put a little dab in there. Remember, it's not going to take a whole lot just because we're going to paint over this. And the other nice thing about uh, uh, this type of glue is obviously a little spray and you're done. Put a little on this side. So now we've got our shelves in there. We'll test fit our lid. Drops right into place. We'll test fit our sliding lid. And everything fits back together just perfectly. Now we've got our box sanded nice and smooth. Everything slides the way that it's supposed to. But before we drill our hole, we're going to have to know what size hole we're going to actually need. For that, you're going to need to actually begin to make your pin. Now you can see I've got a just a simple pen that I've JB welded uh, a ball to. And I'll show you how I do this. I'm going to take just a simple roll pen. Uh, roll pens are, have a split in the side. They're smooth. Um, you can get them pretty much any length that you want. So if I just take that little roll pen, kind of clamp it into place, and then if you take a magnet, stick that to the bottom, well, then you can take your ball bearing sticks right to the top and it's a lot easier to JB weld that. Um, if you've never used JB weld you can buy these pretty much anywhere um, any auto store, uh, Walmart um, just basically uh, mix the two together. It's a 50-50 epoxy. I glue that together and as you can see what we end up with is kind of a rough surface. Now, JB Weld sands pretty easy, so uh, all you have to do is just kind of smooth that out. Um, and then I know the size of my pen, depending on what your roll pen is. Um, I know that this one ends up right at about 530 seconds. So I've got my drill bit at 530 seconds. And you can see also 
that once I've painted it green, then you can just simply draw the face on there. My wife, what she usually does is uh, I will paint them green and get them smooth, and then she takes a Sharpie. Uh, first, actually, she puts the two white dots on there for the eyes, and then she takes a Sharpie, and she dots the eyes, puts the little eyebrow and the smiley face on there, and we'll just put this up so that you can see a nice up close of that. She really does a cute job with that. All right, so first we want to drill the smaller of the two. Remember, we're going to go all the way through both lids. This one and this one, it lines them up, and then all I have to do is take the top one off, drill it larger for the worm to actually sit down in. So we'll just make sure that we try to hit we don't want that rib, so make sure you try to line it up. I know that I'm going to basically be just below this color. Now, you can use a drill press, um, but accuracy is not real big here. Um, try to get it as straight up and down as possible. You can see we went through both. So if we were to put this in, it would lock it, but obviously we don't want that sticking up quite that much because you don't want somebody to be able to just grab that worm out of there. I'm going to drill all the way through this, the size of the worm, so that it's sticking down and just the head is sticking up and it makes it difficult to pinch or pull up out of there. Now next we want to drill this out larger than the hole that's in the inner lid. So I've got a bit at 1130 seconds because that's what I measured that head to be. It's just a little bit smaller than 1130 seconds. So you can see that fits through there nicely. Now, it doesn't quite go down in there far enough uh, to stop somebody from grabbing that out. So if you run into that situation, we'll just use this magnet to pull that back out. Remember, your lid or your inner lid is pretty thick. So you can drill a little deeper into this one with the larger piece, and that also locks everything together a little bit nicer. Now, don't go all the way through. Don't make that mistake, because if you do, then you're going to have to go uh, a little bit larger uh, post. So we'll drop that down in there. Drop that down in there. Then we'll see just how well that worm seats down in there. Now you may have to kind of maneuver that just a little bit just to line everything up. Just make sure it's going down in there good. Just going to enlarge that inner hole just a little bit. It's a little too tight. So that slides in and out just a little bit easier. And that's looking much better. I know that the magnet that I'm going to use is a quarter inch size rare earth magnet. So I know I want the stem to stick right about there. We'll just give that a quick mark. Now, I'm also going to use a quarter-inch Forstner bit. Uh, you want to use the exact same size Forstner bit that your magnet is. Mainly, when you uh, do that and you press this into the wood, 
it doesn't want to come back out. If you do it larger and try to glue it or use a super glue, uh, inevitably it will eventually want to come back out. We don't want to go too deep. If you do go through, it's not the end of the world. Is Remember, we're going to flock the inside of the drawer so you would never see it. Now I know that's at least the depth of the thickness of that magnet. So if I just take that, press it right down into that hole, it holds it just plenty tight for that stem to stick to. What I make my stem out of is a piece of walnut, um, uh, something darker so that it does look like a stem. Um, I start with a much larger piece than I need. This is about half inch by half inch, maybe three quarter by three quarter. And you can see I've already drilled my quarter inch hole right in the center. The reason that we want to do it starting from this size, it's very difficult to try to drill a very small area. So I simply press that in just like I did on the apple. And again, you want, and now since this is hardwood, it'll take just a little bit more to press that into place. But you want to do that, especially in this stem area, because if you don't, it will just pop back out of there until that is flush. Now, it's obviously not going to stick real well because it's not concave like the apple is. So at this point, <clears throat> I begin sanding my sides, getting it to where it, it rests completely flat. Um, you can take your bandsaw and just kind of cut that shape so that it looks a little bit more like a stem and get it down. Don't take too much of this away because if you do, uh, you'll expose the outer edge of that uh, magnet um, and then it'll want to pop back out of there again. You can add just a little bit of super glue with the pressing. Um, it does help to hold it, uh, but again, if it's not the same size to where you have to actually press it into the hole, you're going to have a real hard time trying to get it to stay in there. Flocking is pretty easy to do. Um, we're going to need to put two coats on the inside of the drawer here. Um, reason being is if we do one coat and it soaks in in kind of different areas faster than the others, then when we apply the flock, um, it'll leave kind of patchy areas. Now, normally I would tape up the top of this lid uh, with some painter's tape, but since we have these swoops here, it makes it very difficult to both tape and uh, keep that paint off the edge. So the best thing I can tell you is make your motions with your brush up, never down. That way you'll get very little on that edge, and what you do get, you can sand back off pretty easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this inside painted one time. Then we'll come back and get the second coat on and flock it. All right, now we've got it nice and covered. I'm going to put a second on there. And again, the reason that we're doing this in two stages is because if it soaks in, you're going to have a spot where the uh, flock does not actually adhere to the inside of the drawer here. So that's why you want to make sure you take the time to do this twice. And again, always kind of pull up on those edges. That way you don't have to do quite so much sanding or scraping to get that paint back off that top lip there. We want that line as clean as possible. Now we've got it all nice and wet. What I've done is I've put just a little bit of flock in a Ziploc bag. We just simply put that in the bag, fill the drawer with the flock, 
and shake it really good. And what you're trying to do is embed the flocking into that paint. We'll dump that out. Now you can see that flocking is just absolutely perfect throughout that box. So we'll let that dry. Now I've blown this out to where the flock is, uh, any loose flock is now gone. We can take our inner lid, drop that into place, slide that back into place. Take our worm, drop him into place, and now we've got our stem. Just like that, one complete box. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope to see several of these made. Thanks for watching.